everyone and welcome back to Atman Unlimited. Spindle run out. This can be a bit tricky. Everybody thinks of spindle run out as their tool holder not being in the dead center of the spindle and getting a little bit of wobble as it spins and rotates in the spindle. However, if we recall back to our machine alignment videos, keep in mind that that error of run out may not just be out of center, your tool might be in the spindle at a slight angle. So the farther away you get from the spindle, the more error you may have. So I'm going to do a video coming up on how to measure tool diameters. And I'm going to show you a quick, easy way that's cheap, trying to help out the hobbyist guys here, on how to measure your tool diameters pretty accurately. When I made that video, I noticed my spindle had a little bit more run out in it than I remembered it having. With that said, I was able to borrow another very nice piece of equipment from one of my good friends, Brian. So Brian's helped me out a lot. I appreciate his support. And he actually let me borrow some pretty precise tools, which most people don't do. So we appreciate that. And this is what we've got for, for this episode. So what this is, this is a test bar, and it's 300 millimeters long, it's about 12 inches, and it's about an inch and a half in diameter, or I think uh, 30 millimeters, 30 or 40 millimeters. And all it has is it has a precision ground 40 taper on the end with a pull stud, so we can put this in the machine, and then it's just a bar. But it's a little more than that. This is not a tool holder. This bar is precision ground, and all the way down it, it has measurements and it's calibrated. So when we put this bar in the spindle, we know that this bar has almost zero runout. It's about as perfect as you can get. So that means any runout that we measure using this bar will be from the spindle. So let's put this bar in the spindle, go over to the machine, and take some measurements and then talk about what we're seeing and what could be the causes of it. We're at the machine. We've got our test bar loaded into our spindle. And then we've got our uber accurate dial indicator. Now recall from the alignment videos that each hash mark on this indicator is less than a ten thousandths of an inch. It's about uh, 80 millionths, I believe if the conversion's right. It's 0 .002 millimeters. So we've got test bar, we got our indicator. Let's rotate the spindle, watch the indicator, and we'll check our run out at the very top of the spindle. So we're just gonna slowly rotate. And you can see that there is virtually no run out. I mean, the indicator barely moves at all. So at face value, you, you would be like, yeah, success. We got a beautiful spindle in this machine. It is perfect. There's almost no run out. We're happy. Well, that's not entirely the truth here. Let's see what happens when we move the indicator down here. We moved our test indicator down lower on the bar. This is as far as my Noga can reach. When you're making these measurements, you want to have the indicator anchored to the spindle housing. That way, when you make any of these measurements, you're not inducing any error or deflection when you're doing any push-pull tests from the Z-head. It's all relative to the spindle housing. That's important. So we're approximately eight inches down the bar now and let's uh, rotate the spindle again and see what we get. Wow, look at that. We went from a perfect spindle to having about uh, 0 0.02 millimeters of runout. Now, why is that? Well, what's happening here it's not that the taper grind is off-center because as you could tell at the top 
the run out was almost perfect. It was just about zero. But now that we're eight inches down, we've got about uh, eight ten thousandths of an inch of run out. So at the very bottom of the bar, I measured it at the very bottom of the bar using some other holders, and it's approximately about a thou and a half. So what's going on here? Well, the bottom of the spindle taper is ground real good, and it's got good contact area. But the top of the spindle taper near the pull stud has a little tiny bit of wear on the, on the inside of it, and it lines up, I put a mark on the spindle, lines up right there okay so you can see we're at the high side and if you if you could see the drive dogs it just about lines up with the tool changer so what's been happening is as the tools have been coming in they've been gently just rubbing on the inside of that spindle over the years and it's created a little tiny bit of angular error in the spindle taper this is why that tool changer video where I showed you how to adjust your tool changer is so important it's not important in the first few months or maybe even the first year, but over the life of a machine and a spindle, you can, you know, induce a wear in it and cause error for yourself. So this is one test that you can perform with this test bar. The other test that we can do while we have this test bar in here is we can check the preload on the spindle bearings. So by pushing on the bottom of the test bar away from the indicator and then releasing, we can take a measurement and then we can pull on it and release and take another measurement. And the difference between the two measurements is how much uh, free play that you've got in your spindle bearings. So your spindle bearings are supposed to be preloaded and they're preloaded pretty high so that you have the rigidity in your spindle. So if you see more than you know a tenth or two of movement that means that your, your preload in your spindle is starting to drop a little bit. So let's run this test here. So I'm going to pull towards me first. And you, you don't have to ape on it. You just want to deflect it, you know, a thou or two and let go. And we're at zero. And now I'm going to push and let go. And now we've got about 0 0.006 millimeters. So that's about two ten thousandths, but that's only at eight inches. So this spindle's right on the edge of what we would consider, you know, okay. The, the preload on the bearings is probably starting to drop a little bit. You know, again, this was a used machine. I have no idea how old this spindle is or how it's been treated. But this can give you a good indication of the health of a spindle. If you've got a lot of offset between pushing and pulling, that means your preload's starting to drop and you're going to have spindle bearing problems, you know, pretty soon afterwards. So that's another good indication of the health of your spindle. The last test that we can do with this test bar, and it's similar to our Z alignment video that we did a while back, is you can put your uh, test indicator reference to the table and then run the z-axis up and down and measure how much that test bar is drifting towards or away from the indicator as your z is going up and down. So this can also give you a measurement of the z-axis and then the, the, the spindle trend because remember that one, that time, now you're referenced to the spindle, not just the z-axis. In the z-axis alignment video, we used a granite square and we were referenced to the z-head not the spindle. So you can see by taking all of these different measurements it allows you to dial in exactly what your problem is so that you can fix it and correct it the first time. So you can see that there is more to run out than just you know a little off center from the actual axis of rotation. If the taper in your spindle is a little bit worn like, like this one is. Now, I have no idea how old this spindle is. I don't know if it's ever been changed. It could be from 1994. I don't know. One of the things that I found when I bought this machine was that the tool changer was misaligned. And through careful testing using this test bar, what I found was is that the 
high spot and low spot in the spindle taper that's causing that slight angular deflection lines up perfectly with one of the adjustment axes on the tool changer. So what's probably been happening is the tool changer was coming in just a little too far and then every time the spindle came down the tool would rub on that side of the spindle and come out. So over the years of doing this, and it takes years because it's you know hardened steel on hardened steel, it slowly wore the taper just a little tiny bit. And that's what's causing that angular deflection. Now it's not a lot. We're only seeing about 1.6 thousandths of an inch at the end of a 12 inch bar. So if you're using you know a four inch tool holder, you're gonna have pretty good run out still. It's not a lot. Is it ideal? Yeah. Not likely, you know, if I was trying to make really precision parts and, you know, doing long, short tools on long tool holders, you'd probably want to have a spindle regrind or a spindle, you know, replacement. But is it catastrophic? No, it's not that bad. So the other thing that we can do with the test bar that we showed is we can also measure our bearing preload by pushing and pulling on the bottom of that test bar we can see if there's any permanent offset between a push and a pull and we can check our bearing preload. Our bearing preload's pretty good. Uh, so we're seeing about two thousandths at the end of 12 inches. Again, that's on the edge of you know, what you would consider acceptable. But again, for what we're doing, it's not catastrophic. We're not, I'm not gonna spend you know, $3,500 on a spindle cartridge right now for that little tiny bit of run out. It's just, you know, it doesn't make dollars and cents. We can still make the parts that we need to make with the accuracy that we need to make them. So I hope this helps you understand a little bit more about spindle tapers and runouts. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments below. Uh, thanks for watching and thanks for supporting our channel. We'll see you in the next video.